So today we're gonna to talk about the misery index and why it's important and why you need to watch it. So for those of you who might not know what the misery index, it's because inflation has been pretty good in most of our lifetime. For those of you who are a little bit older, the misery index was a real thing back in the 70s and the 80s. The reason I'm talking about it today is because it's now become very relevant in today's times. The original misery index was initially popularized in the 1970s to measure America's economic health. Using the misery index, it's derived that both higher unemployment rates and inflation worsening create the economic and social costs for the entire country. Now, so why is this important? Because this can determine elections. The misery index, MI, is basically seasonally adjusted rate of unemployment and the annual inflation rate, or MI equals U plus I. The information around the misery index is widely available on the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the US Department of Labor. What should be obvious is that the lower the score, the better the economy and the better the times. As you can see from the Jimmy Carter era, from the 70s and the early 80s, the misery index was very high at 19.7, which caused him the election to Ronald Reagan the very following year. And during that time, Reagan was able to get the economy back in order and bring that misery index to 9.7. And through these years, you can see we've had pretty good unemployment and pretty good inflation as reflected by all the presidents during that period of time. As you can see from the last two presidents, we're starting to trend back up from 8.1 to 10.8, and we'll see in a minute what it is today. So now let's take a look at the first part of the equation, which of course is labor or employment or unemployment. And as you guys have seen from a video I did before, there are several ways that employment gets categorized or unemployment. U1 through U6, and this has been around for a long time. What I most want you to understand, the unemployment rate that you see in the media is the U3 report. But the real number, as I've said before, is U6. Because U6 includes persons marginally attached to the labor force are those who currently are neither working nor looking for work, but indicate that they want to and are available for a job and have looked for work sometime in the last six months. Discouraged workers, a subset of the marginally attached, have given a job-related reason for not currently looking for work. Persons employed part-time for economic reasons are those who want and are available for full-time work but have had to settle for part-time schedule. Updated population controls are also introduced annually with the release of the, this January data. The point is that these unemployment rates that are listed here and are listed here under U3 don't represent really the true misery index because you really need to take a look at all people that are unemployed. So now let's take a look at the real numbers as of March of 2022 when these were last updated. The first one for U3 is 3.6% unemployment. Not bad if you go back and look for one year later, of course, as we come out of this pandemic. The U6, however, is significantly higher, a little over 3% higher at 6.9%. And we move over here to the inflation chart, and we all know that we're experiencing high inflation, and some would say that this number is extremely conservative. But the reported number is 79 and the forecasted number actually brings it up over 8 to 8.2 to 8.3. Stormy weather just can't get my poor self together. But for purposes of our misery index, we're going to look at the two ranges, the 3.6 plus the 6.9 plus the 7.9 of inflation, and we come with a misery index of 11.5 to 14.8 under the current administration. So here's a summary now of the current administration of what's happening in March of 2022 as compared with the other presidents in history. The reason this is important is because these numbers do affect elections and we have a midterm coming up. So who we vote for in all of our individual states and federally is very, very important. As an investor, I'm concerned about the following. Interest rates, supply chains, oil prices, war, and inflation, which we really haven't seen yet from the war 
as a result of some of the sanctions, the employment or underemployment plus the wages. As we roll into these midterm elections, all of these are going to become very, very, very important. So on my YouTube channel, I continue to get lots and lots of questions from my own subscribers on our inner circle and our premium channel on YouTube. As investors, you need to be tuned into these kinds of things. Is the Fed going to continue to rise interest rates and slow down the economy? Because if it does, we are definitely going to see less consumption, less GDP, and we could move into stagflation. Just take a look at the video I just did on that topic. Two, the supply chains are going to get worse, especially with all these sanctions and all these countries positioning right now as a result of the Russia invasion to the Ukraine. I don't know about you guys, but I'm speaking from personal experience about the supply chain issues that I'm having just on the projects that we're trying to build here in Arizona and we're trying to renovate in Texas and Oklahoma and some of the other areas. The third one is oil price. Now, energy and oil drives everything. There's a couple things to pay attention to. One is, in order for us to get things, the cost to transport it is gonna go up, therefore those things are gonna go up. And the second one that you really need to look at is the petrodollar. Right now, the countries are positioning on whether or not they're gonna pay for the oil in US dollars, a policy that's been in place since the 70s. If that policy is compromised, then the US dollar is more at risk than it was before. Four, there's big concerns around the war and there's lots of uncertainty on what will happen to the rest of the world as a result of some of these sanctions that are already in place. Five, even though the employment rate has shown to be better, there's still a lot of displaced workers, over 12 million of them right now, and those wages are not keeping up with the inflation rates, and so people are falling further and further behind. As a business owner, a landlord, a real estate investor, a property manager, a contractor, and all the business I own, I'm concerned about all these things because as they relate to my own renters, my own employees, and my family, all of these will impact how we do things, not just now, but in the future. So who we elect in office will impact policy so we can try to get these misery indexes back down like we've enjoyed for the last 30 years. So again, thank you guys for watching. If you like this, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and I'll continue to do these just for you guys.